Hey TNN, hey Facebook, it is Kevin Newsom. I'm here today with a new show, or a new series I should say, called 24 After. The premise is this, 24 hours after a big newsworthy event, I'm going to come back, make some observations, and analyze what exactly happened. So let's get started. The Trump missile strike on Syria, all everyone is talking about, it is dominating the news cycle. I'm going to make three observations on what I've seen in the last 24 hours concerning this missile strike and then make a little bit of uh, predictions or analysis as far as what could happen in the future. First observation, neoconservatives are loving this move. You have to understand, for neoconservatives, war is like heroin. So you give them a little bit, they're going to come back for more. Prior to this, they hated the fact that Trump was president. Now you have Senators McCain and Graham fully on board saying, we want more. We want more. We want more war. You have Senator Marco Rubio also on board saying, I fully support the move. It's the right move. And perhaps even the Russians were colluding with the Syrians on this gas attack. Of course, they brought no proof whatsoever that the Syrians actually did gas anybody. But who needs proof? The neocons are fully on board. Observation two, the mainstream media is fully on board with this as well. We have people like Fareed Zakaria, best known from his days at CNN, all the way to Elliot Abrams from the Weekly Standard saying, President Trump is now really the president of the United States. He's a man we can work with. He's legitimate now. He's learned his lessons. He's fully presidential. It's a bizarre chorus of approval from people who last week were busy lampooning the man, hating the man, saying he's totally unqualified and ignorant and stupid and probably needs to be impeached. All of a sudden, now fully approving President Trump. Observation three, the people who are most against this move, who are speaking out the most, are the people who supported Trump. It's amazing to see this. You have the libertarians, you have the classic conservatives, paleoconservatives, new right, alt right, far right, all coming out and saying this is horrible. This is a bad idea. We don't need to be doing this. So we have the people who are the most in favor of Trump, who supported Trump, or at the very least did not oppose Trump, saying now, we do not want to go to war. We don't want more war. We don't want more strikes on Syria. We don't want to keep teaming up with ISIS. We don't want war with Russia. The crowd that supported Trump the most up until uh, two days ago are really the biggest bunch of people saying, we don't want this. We don't want more war. So the people who were the most in favor of Trump 48 hours ago are the ones speaking out the loudest against this move. And the mainstream media and the neocons who hated the man with a passion 48 hours ago are most in favor of this missile strike. Very strange times we're living in. So what's the analysis? What does all of this actually really mean? The first thing and perhaps the most surprising this was a symbolic action, and it was not actually aimed at Syria, it was aimed at North Korea. I know it's hard for some people to understand that an attack on one country really is a message to another, but you really need to think about the world as a chessboard. So not everything is as it appears, and sometimes a hand moving over here is meant to cover what's going on over here. And that's what I believe is happening with this maneuver. If the U.S. military was serious about a real military strike on Syria, they wouldn't have phoned ahead. They wouldn't have picked a target that was occupied, at least previous to the attack, by Russian soldiers and airmen. They would have chosen somewhere else, and they would have struck a lot harder. So this message was directed at North Korea and, to a smaller extent, to China. Again, what I think we should look out for is not World War III, immediately at least. What we should really be paying attention to is the July meeting between President Putin and President Trump. That is where a lot of things are going to be decided on this planet. A lot of geopolitical areas 
that you see in the news as far as wars, rumors of wars, economics, etc., etc., that's where I think a lot of this is going to be ironed out. That means Syria. That means Ukraine. That could even mean North Korea. So instead of focusing on Syria right now, what we should be focus focusing on geopolitically is the meeting of Trump and Putin in July. Implications of what happens, obviously it's an act of war against a sovereign country. Not something I like. I am one of those who really does not like this maneuver, but I think I understand what's going on behind the scenes. I think this move is meant to be a symbolic heads up to North Korea, and uh, it doesn't hurt President Trump from a political standpoint that the neoconservatives of his own party and the media are all of a sudden backing his move. So that's your heads up there. That's my take on the subject. Uh, thanks for watching and listening wherever and whenever you are. God bless you.